This is the WBBM Air Theater, Wrigley Building, Chicago. WBBM FM, Chicago. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. And now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. me. In a few days, we're celebrating the birthday of a great American. No, it's not to me. It's Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Mama Mia, if George Washington was the father of his country, then I think Abraham Lincoln was his favorite son. Here in America, there's, there's hundreds of things named after this great man. And they got a Lincoln Memorial, a Lincoln Nebraska, a Lincoln Laundry. And I read the once in Los Angeles, they even got a link in a jail. <laughs> but you should have seen my shirts, Mamma Mia. Today they come back from the link in the laundry, and in honor of a Lincoln's birthday, they freed all the buttons. <laughs> Here in America, Mamma Mia, if, if you're very big, then they put your face on the money. Well, they put Mr. Lincoln on a five dollar bill. But to show you how fair Mr. Lincoln was, he's also one the poor people should see him. Too, so he's he's a put his face on a penny. <laughs> anyway, tonight when I'm oh, how, how, how do you do, lady? Is something I, I can do for you? Yes, you have something I'd like to buy. That Lincoln picture over there. Oh, lady, you picked out the one thing you can't have. Why not? I can't sell a Lincoln on his birthday. What? Here, why don't you buy Washington? He's a very nice man. I want Lincoln. I want him too. Huh? Letty, please, please understand, huh? You, you like your husband, huh? All year, maybe you got the mad on him, you could sell him. But on his birthday, you make a party for him. Same with me and Lincoln. Oh, but that's ridiculous. No, no, it's not ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a respect. Here, here's a very good antique. That's, that's a Washington bed. I don't want it. Besides, every antique shop has a Washington bed. You're right, the lady. There's so many Washington beds for sale, you would think Washington has slept all through the revolution. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, how's about this nice picture of Washington? And in ten days, I don't sell him either. Why not? That's a his birthday, then. I never heard of anything so crazy. No, please, lady, don't be mad. Wait, wait, I, I'll show you something else. By, by Andrew Jackson, Betty Ross. You're going to be very happy living with them. Huh? Look at this statue of Paul Revere. He's so alive, you want to feed his horse the carrots. But I want the Lincoln picture. I want to give it to someone on Lincoln's birthday. But if you give it to someone, then, then I won't have it. Well, if you don't want to sell it, what are you in business for? You're right, the lady. Maybe I should have been a papa going to business. A popcorn is to never have a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Ann. I'm, I'm sorry... Mamma mia, this is day is no start out right. I'm afraid it's a bad sign. But don't you worry, Mr. Lincoln. You and me, we're going to celebrate your birthday together. Even if somebody's offering me a thousand dollars for you. Thousand dollars? <laughs> well, for thousand dollars, I sell both of us and we're still together. <laughs> 
Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, Pasquale. Uh, tell me, little banana nose, uh, how's your business? Uh, is it picking up? No, Pasquale, is it still laying down? Uh, could it be, Mr. Bigger Businessman, because you don't sell a Lincoln pictures on a Lincoln's birthday, maybe because of her? Oh, you was a listening from your restaurant, huh, Pasquale? Oh, no, Luigi, I got a portable ears that they was a hiding under your chair. <laughs> oh, what a boob. Lady, I can't sell you, Lincoln. I'd say it's a birthday. We're going to celebrate it together. Luigi, maybe you, I could make you happy and start the Civil War over again, eh? Well, Pasquale, I, I tried to sell her something else. Sure, I heard you. Lady, buy Washington's a bed. Even if she said everybody else is a god, you could have said yours is a different. You could have shown her it's got her in a string of mattress. <laughs> <laughs> but, Pasquale, in a Washington's a day, they didn't have any string of mattresses. I know. That's what would have made it so different. <laughs> oh, what's the use to talk to you? You couldn't sell a straw to a drowning man. Pasquale, that's a silly. What the fuck a man wants to drink when he's in the water? <laughs> what a greenhorn. Millions of countrymen, and I had to bring you from Italy. Why couldn't I bring Petrillo? <laughs> Petrillo? Sure, he's a man who's to make a bigger success. Every time somebody's a go peep on a piccolo, he's to get a penny. <laughs> Well, all right, Pasquale. So, so I'm not such a good a business man. That's, that's the way I am. That's not the worst thing in the whole world. Ah, oh, listen to him admit it. You like to hear yourself called a flop. Flop? Yes, a flop. F-L-A-P. Flop. <laughs> You're a failure in America. Pasquale, don't say that. I'm, I'm a no failure. Yes, you are. Look, look at this old junk you got here. And you turned down the sale of a picture. Is, is it not all a junk? Oh, uh, no. What are you going to do with this broken down harp? A slice of hard-boiled eggs? <laughs> I suppose you're going to become a J.P. Morgenthau with this uh, dirty Paul Revere statue. No, but Squally, don't uh, please. I have a respect for Paul Revere. Maybe you don't know this, but his famous ride has is, is maybe saved this whole country. Yes, I know, I know. So what? So he's a ride around on his horse all day and he's a yellow, hi old silver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Look who's going to teach me about geography. Squally, you mean a history? History, eh? Luigi, when a horse is a run, does he hiss or does he jog? He's a jogger. Then he's a jogger. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Luigi, I'm no here to make you feel bad. Even though you're a bad businessman, I'm still willing to take all your problems off your hands. But how? You don't even have to sell anything. I offer you what they call in America good old-fashioned horse trade. Horse trade? That's all right. I take your store, you take my daughter Rosa. <laughs> Sorry, I'm no one to trade. You keep your horse. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Flop. You got an all right tag that way. The only reason you don't marry my Rosa is just because she's a happened to weigh 250 pounds, all right? Right. Well, that's the proof of what a stupid businessman you are. When you marry a woman, you got to look for value. Value? Sure. When you buy toothpaste, what do you buy? The small size, the medium size? You know, you're Pasquale, I'm not going to buy the giant economy sizes. <laughs> Luigi, don't forget that famous slogan, good things are coming in a big packages. You mean little packages, yeah. Today, I'm a pushing a big package. <laughs> no use to talk to me, Pasquale. I'm not taking them. All right, Mr. Bankrupt. You a failure, flop, and you always will be. What? Pasquale, you, you go get out of my story. You, you can't talk like that. Uh, I said it where it hurts the most, huh? Well, if you don't believe in me, you ask your school chumps if you ain't a failure. Since you've been here, you ain't accumulated ten cents. If Eisenhower ran the country the way you run your business, the whole army would be down to one meatball. <laughs> Squally, go on, go on and get out. I'm an old failure, I'm an old flopping, and I'm a don't want to hear no more from you. And I bet you're afraid to ask your school chops, too, eh? No, no, I'm not. I'm not afraid. In fact, it's a time for my night school now, and, and I'm going to go and ask him a sister, so goodbye. Mm. Maybe I insulted him too hard. <laughs> Little pup squeak is so sensitive. <laughs> Tell him he's a failure, a flop, ain't got a dime, and never will have, and should go into bankruptcy. <laughs> right away, he's a feel bad. <laughs> Just oh, I, I never saw a man All right, quiet, class. I'll call the roll. 
Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwood? Here. Mr. Olson? Uh, Mr. Schultz? Never swap horses in midstream. Uh. <laughs> well, since you must be so smart, Mr. Schultz, who originally said never swap horses in midstream? Johnny Longdon. <laughs> yes. Gosh, my Miss Bolling, of course it was Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Now, class, I asked you to read the chapter on Lincoln in your history books. Are there any questions before I begin the lesson? Uh, Miss Bolling, I'm... I'm like to ask a very important question. Well, now, by that tone in your voice, I think it's a personal question, isn't it? Yes. Well, then save it for later, please, Mr. Basco. But it's a very important... Well, then, gentlemen, let's get on with our lesson. Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us when Abraham Lincoln was born and when he died. Certainly. Abraham Lincoln died on April 15, 1865. Yes, and when was he born? You must be joking, Miss Balding. Mr. Horowitz, when was Lincoln born? On Lincoln's birthday, what else? <laughs> Tell us the year, Mr. Horowitz. Uh, 1809. Go on, the month. February. The day. The 12th. All right. Now, Mr. Schultz. If you ask me what time it happened and who was the doctor, I am finished. <laughs> uh, Mr. Olson, tell us something about Lincoln's boyhood, please. Miss Spaulding, I would be just overjoyed to tell you. <laughs> Well, there he goes. Old Faithful is about to spout some hot air. <laughs> well, he was born in a log cabin in Kentucky. Uh, during his youth, he worked on a boat. He owned a general store. He was a farmer, a rail spitter, a postmaster, a surveyor. Yeah, but he wanted a job with more security, so he became president. <laughs> oh, stop that, Mr. Schultz. Uh, go on, Mr. Olson. Oh, Miss Balding, I have dozens of books about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, before I continue with his youth, uh, perhaps you would like me to recite his Gettysburg address, or his second inaugural address, or his famous reply to Douglas, or perhaps I could quote excerpts from his most famous letters. Oh, well, then why don't you just go home and bake Link on a birthday cake? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you'd better stop that. No, Miss Polly, I can't bear it. When I hear such brains showing off, somebody's got to stick up for the dumb cops in this world. <laughs> well, uh, let's continue. And thank you, Mr. Olson. Thank you. Uh, now, Mr. Basco? Come on, Miss Polly, is, is, is it all right if I ask that a question now? You better let him, Miss Polly, or he's going to explode and blow up the whole school. <laughs> Oh, all right. I suppose you want to have some more information on our weekend excursion. Weekend excursion? What's that? I didn't have a chance to talk to him about it yet, Miss Bolton. Well, I've decided to take the class on a two-day bus trip in and around Chicago, pointing out the various sites. We eat our meals out and we sleep in a hotel. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, Luigi. Very educational. Yeah, besides, it gives us a chance to get away from our wives. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. Mr. Basco, we're all going, and the cost of the entire trip, including meals, is $18.75. Huh? But, Miss Polly, I'm, I'm, I'm not got the eighteen and seventy-five. Luigi, don't you ever have any money? Well, it oh, sings every time you're broke, Luigi. Yeah, but instead of Luigi Basco, they should call you Luigi Bankruptcy. <laughs> uh, well, what do you say? Should... I'm a, a bankrupt. Now, Luigi, don't get excited. I'm only kidding. I loan you the money. Hmm? I'm going to want a loan. I'm going to want to nothing. Well, Luigi, if you don't go, we won't go. Then the whole trip, which was going to be such a success, is going to be a failure. Failure? Don't say that to me. All right, a flop. Failure. Flop. <laughs> Bankruptcy. Mamma mia. Mr. Basco, where are you going? Mr. Basco. He's gone. Now, what do you suppose we said that chased him out? I don't know. But if I ran out every time my wife said a nasty word, I would freeze to death in the cold. <laughs> Before we is spearmint gum handy and chew a stick from time to time. You see, the smooth, easy chewing helps relieve the strain and tension most of us build up during the day, makes it easier to relax, and helps you get more enjoyment out of the things you do. Then, too, Wrigley spearmint gum tastes good. You'll like the lively, real spearmint flavor, flavor that freshens your taste and helps keep your mouth feeling moist and clean. So for good, easy chewing and pleasant relaxation, for refreshment any time and any place, get a few packages of refreshing, delicious, 
Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma me, I'm, I'm going to want to tell you all about my troubles. I'm going to feel so terrible today, I, I don't even feel like to write to you. So don't be surprised if you don't get this letter, because maybe I'm never going to send it anyway. <laughs> anyway, Mamma me, I'm... Luigi, my fellow boob. Uh, hello, Shirley. Ach, what is the matter with you, Luigi? You look like an Airedale with the air leaking out. <laughs> Say, if you'll feel any better, I'll apologize for whatever you want I should apologize That's for. Right. What I said That's in the right. class last night. Mm -hmm. You know, in front of the fellas and the Spalding. I'm sorry in the school house. I know. My shoes is not to you. It's, it, it's a mischief. I'm, I'm a flap failure. Just like Pasquale said to me... And, and all you in the classes agree with him. Now, that's not true. You, you could do anything you want to. That's what I told Pasquale. I'm, I'm no good in the antique shop, but I told him I could get a job as a painter, carpenter, maybe bricklayer, but he said you got to belong to the union. But that's right, Luigi. He said only job I can get, I'm sure to succeed, is a job as a husband. Then what did you say? I'm said the way his daughter eats, I could never pay the union dues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but uh, don't make me a successor, Schultz. Schultz, what am I going to do? Ach, Luigi, smile. Don't worry. We'll think of something. No, himmel. Himmel into my head, an idea just poop. What? <laughs> Luigi, tell me, do, do you think you could be a barber? Well, Schultz, once in a while I, I used to give a haircut. Oh, that's wonderful. You could open your own barber shop right away. Uh, uh, who did you give the haircuts to? Uncle Pietro's goat. <laughs> well, Luigi, here we don't let our beards grow so long, yeah. But I still think I got it a good idea. You're gonna learn to be a barber. I learn it, but who's gonna learn me? Him, Luigi, what grammar? It's who is going to learn I? <laughs> sure, sir. Sure, sir. Do, do the barbers make good the money? Money? But sure, there's plenty of profit. And it all comes off the top. <laughs> now, now, smile, Luigi. You are not going to fail you. You are going to go to barber college. Uh, sure, Sam, I'm not even finished the high school. <laughs> ah, stop it, Luigi. I'll give you the money, and when you become a barber, you can pay me back in haircuts. No, 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 Schultz, thanks, but I'm going to want to nobody some money. I'm, I'm going to start on my own. On your own? On your own what? You ain't got nothing. Schultz, no, 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 don't run. It's your store. If anybody leaves, it's got to be me. <laughs> Please, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciate what you... No, stop. I'm not going to let you alone. Sure, the truth is, is, is there nothing for me to do? I'm, I'm, I'm a can't sell. I'm, I'm a failure. That's not true, Luigi. Anybody can learn how to sell. Look at me. I never sold a thing in my life till I opened up my delicatessen store. Today, there ain't a case of heartburn in the neighborhood that can't be traced to my salami. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a don't want to be a salesman. No, Luigi, you got to want. You are living in a country where everything is competition. If you don't learn to sell, 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 you can't exist. Everything is salesmanship. Everything? Certainly. Without salesmanship, we would all be bachelors. <laughs> all right, Schultz. Schultz, I, I'm, I'm going to try what I should do. Well, the best way to learn is to get a job as a salesman. Yeah, let me look in that newspaper. All right, here, yeah. here's, yeah, here's the news. No, no, here's the salesman's jobs right uh -huh. here. Vacuum cleaners, Vacuum. photography. Vacuum. Most of these you got to know something about. Uh -huh. Here, here, what? clothing salesman needed for Lincoln's birthday. Oh. Luigi, this is ideal for you. You don't even have to lose a day off from business and you can see how you're going to make out. All right, all right, Schultz. I try. Yeah, and when you get back, we're going to have a little celebration prepared for you, Luigi. Huh? Yeah. Now, what? take the paper and let me see one thing. No, stop, Schultz. No, no, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to get the coffee in my pocket. I got the coffee to the story. <laughs> no, I mean a smile, Luigi. Smile, all right. Don't be smile, Luigi. Be like me, Luigi. Always happy, always laughing. <laughs> Ooh, what? My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> well, I 
think you'll do fine, Mr. Belasco. Bel- no, no, it's a Basco, Luigi Basco. Oh, yes, Basco, and I'm White House. White the House. Exactly. We have many strangers coming in here, and with today Lincoln's birthday uh, being their day off, they'll be down here buying suits. You'll handle them. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Light the House. Uh, that's it. It's White House. White. White. I think of the color White House. White. Just as in Washington, D.C. Think of the capital of our nation, and you'll always have my name on the tip of your tongue. Well, yes, to Mr. Eisenhower. I'm in a White House. I'm in a White Stone. It's White, and ha- uh, white ha- House. <laughs> now, now, our operation here is very simple. We run a very high-class operation on commission. Very high class. Oh, very, very. You stand outside the store. When someone passes by, you shake hands with them. Uh, I'm a shake of hands with them? Exactly. And when you do, you don't let go until they're 50 feet inside the store. <laughs> That's a very high class, Mr. Mr. Wainisauce. White stone. White stone. White. I mean, White House. Excuse me, Mr. 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 Say it. Must I? Yes. Remember, house. All right, uh, Mr. Flapper House. <laughs> well, what's the use? It's not every day I can get salesmen in here, especially those that speak the language. Now, Mr. Uh, oh, White House. Uh, now I'm trying to think of your name. Basco. Ah, <laughs> Bunko. <laughs> uh, <laughs> White <the> face. <laughs> All right, let's forget it. You're a clever little one. Now, our merchandising operation is also very simple. High class. Oh, very, very. We don't pay a regular salary. You work on commission. The more you sell, the more you make. Uh That's a good way to learn how to be salesman. Oh, excellent. Now, our store is strictly one price. One price. Exactly. We don't make much because the quality of our merchandise is very high. Now, for instance, here's a suit right here, this brown check. Now, it's strictly one price. One price. If you sell it for $18, you keep nine for yourself. Mamma mia, the one price is any price I sell it to for. That is up to you. Now, say a customer comes in. Now, don't get into a long conversation with him. That way you reach a stalemate. Huh? A stalemate. Don't you know what that is? An old wife. <laughs> It simply means nothing happens. Immediately, you try on a suit. Of course, you treat him courteously, but try to make the sale. I try on a suit. Exactly. If it's baggy on him, you tell him it's a new style. Treat him right. But sell him. If it's tight on him... A new style. Uh-huh. What's the old style? When it's his own suit. <laughs> well, what do I see here? A customer coming in? Take care of him. All right. You, you, you think I can do it? <laughs> you can try. I'll watch you this once. Yes, sir. I'm the general manager of this store, and this is our head salesman. He'll take care of you. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm head salesman. How do you do, mister? Shake your hands. All right. Now, where am I sure to pull him? <laughs> no place. He's inside already. <laughs> just sell him. All right, just sell him. Mister, I think you need a new suit because you look a little baggy. <laughs> what? That's fine. Fine. But, uh, Mr. Justice, so it shouldn't be a stalemate. I'm going to give you any new style in the house, one the price. I'm also throwing the manager because he's uh, making nine dollars. Uh. <laughs> what do you say? I'm uh, saying that you keep your job. If I'm uh, going to make a living like this, it's uh, better we should have bought the stop. So goodbye, Mr. Brickerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he sure so hard with salts in it. Uh, Miss, Miss Spalding, what are you doing here? Well, I told you we was going to have a celebration. This is sort of a surprise for you. Yeah, Luigi, where are with you? Yeah, so we called the store downtown. I said you were going hours ago. What you doing in the meantime? Well, I'm, I'm going to go home, so I'm walk around the town and see the planetarium, zoo, lake, uh, library. And... Luigi, don't tell us you got a job as a guy. <laughs> oh, please, this, this, this is nothing to laugh at. I appreciate how you want to help me out, the friends, and make me salesman and everything, but I'm a flop, failure, I'm, I'm a nothing. Luigi, you are taking a very pessimistic view. Nothing <laughs> 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 good can come from it. Sorry, what's up, Pasquale? He, he knows what I mean. Luigi, look on the cake. Huh? What? It's for you. Happy birthday. Mr. Lincoln. 
And I've paid it for it myself, Luigi. Maybe you're right if you don't want to sell the picture. If you want to celebrate Lincoln's birthday, then we all are going to celebrate. Sure, oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, no, 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 please. It's, it's, it's no use. But it thanks everybody. Still, still it only changed me that, that I'm a failure. I'm, I'm a couldn't even sell a suit. Nothing. Mr. Basco, let me tell you something about a failure. A man you idolize, Abraham Lincoln. Le- failure? These are facts. Abraham Lincoln had less than one year of schooling. He could be considered a failure as far as education goes. He worked as a rail splitter, he clerked in a store, he did odd jobs, even managed a mill. If you said he couldn't hold on to a job, you wouldn't be far from the truth. He couldn't even run a store. Store? Store like me? Yes, that's right. He even had a partner, but the store went into bankruptcy. He served a term in Congress, but considered himself such a failure there that he retired to private life. Even then, when he did come back into public life, he tried to become a senator and failed. He failed again as a possible candidate for vice president. He changed his party and again ran for the Senate, and again he failed. Mama, mama, me, I'm, I'm a failed in as many things as Lincoln did. Yes, and you know what that means? Yeah, that means that Luigi is going to be our next president. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vasco, it means very simply you're never a failure until you consider yourself one. Miss Spalding. Thank you, Miss Spalding. Well, come on, everybody. Let's cut the cake. I got us some wonderful food away. Oh, 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 oh. And speaking of waiting, Luigi, you know who else is awaiting? No, who, Pascali? Who you think? Rosa! 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 You called me, Papa! <laughs> Yes, my little log cabin. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, today's Lincoln's birthday. What do you say to Luigi? Luigi, are you going to grow a beard? No. Oh. <laughs> and she cute. <laughs> Luigi, you want a home, money, family, everything... Why don't you marry Rosa and become a big success? No, no, Pascal, I'm no failure. But that's the biggest success I'm no one to be. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is enjoyable, too. Yes, the moment you sink your teeth into a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, you start to enjoy the lively, real spearmint flavor. Flavor that tastes good and helps keep your mouth feeling fresh and clean. Then, too, you get a good feeling from the pleasant, easy chewing. The kind of natural chewing that helps relieve strain and tension makes it easier for you to relax. And you know, you can enjoy Wrigley's Spearmint Gum just about any time and any place. So get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum next time you're out. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Chip as Miss Paulding, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olson, Sandra Gould as the customer, and Hal Mark as the salesman. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Charles Lyon speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>